Becca Powers, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Yes, thanks for having me, John. It is a pleasure to be with you. I'm excited to have a nice conversation. We're going to be talking about the power of and, A-N-D, how replacing your ors with and creates more expansion in your life. You're going to unpack all of that for us. We're going to have a really nice dialogue around it. Um, before we get started with that, though, I just wanted to share Becca's bio with everybody. Becca Powers is an award-winning high-tech sales executive and motivational speaker. With over 20 years of experience, her career boasts Fortune 500 giants, such as Dell and Cisco, from growing up with musician parents who flirted with addiction to dropping out of college and becoming a single parent of two by the age of 28, Becca's guts and grit journey to success reaches beyond business. As a motivational speaker, she empowers women to prioritize themselves for a more fulfilling, joyful life. I think that is fantastic. Uh, you know, of course, as a husband, as a father of four daughters, um, it's something I want for all of them and for everyone really um, to have a really wonderful, expan expansive and empowering kind of a life and experience. And I know that's, you know, sometimes a, a challenge and a, and a battle with, with some of the barriers put in place due to patriarchy and sexism in the workplace and, and those sorts of things. So uh, you're doing a great work and important work. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah. Anything else you, you would like to you. share? About well, I, I do like to share, um, especially since it's the power of and so that when you open, there is a few titles there, but I like to really lean into the fact that I'm multifaceted because I feel so much in times, especially if we're talking corporate, right? You have a lot of HR on here and a lot of corporate folks, leaders. Um, um, and, and I identify so much with the leaders. I've spent over half my career in middle management. So um, when you're dedicated to a company, I think oftentimes you feel as though you can't have be, you can't be doing other things that give you fulfillment. Like everything is the business, everything's your people. And in essence, that um, for me personally, and now I've found for many others too, is the is the essential piece that drains them is that there's no passion and other things going on. So I love to say that I work full time. I'm a sales executive at Cisco right now, a strategic sales lead. I am a writer. I have my own book that I recently written. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a corporate consultant. I love focusing on employee engagement and employee empowerment and things like that. And um, before I started leaning into multiple things, and we can kind of just go into to dialogue here. But before I started leaning into multiple things, I thought all of these other things that I'm doing had to wait till retirement <laughs> or had to wait for another stage in life because I was actively raising my kids too. And what I found is that's just a myth. And so we can kind of just open it up. I, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And by the way, I, I'm assuming that's a poster behind you of your book or you yes. have the biggest book like physical book, biggest ever. book ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, it's wonderful. Harness your inner CEO is the title of your book. I'll, I'll give you a chance to talk more about that sure. uh, a little bit later, but yeah, so you, you wear a lot of hats and I think, uh, I think anyone who, well, all of us wear a lot of hats, but I think particularly mothers <laughs> wear a lot of hats. Right. And we know, for example, there's lots of research on how women at home disproportionately bear the burden of childcare, elder care, home tasks, all that kind of stuff. Now that's not universal. And so I'm not trying to, you know, claim that that's the way it is in every home, but, but uh, as we look in the aggregate, that tends to be the case. And so not only do you have women wearing all those hats uh, at home, but then you go into the corporate world and everything that's involved there. And then maybe you want to get involved in the community. Maybe you want to be on the PTA, you know, with your kids or whatever, right? Like there's just all these things. And so it, it really is challenging. And I think you, you mentioned, you know, the notion, the false notion that we have to wait uh, for later, like in retirement or later in our career. And that was a very common notion. I think previous generations, that's exactly how it was viewed. Um, you either had separate and distinct roles, right? You had like these, these uh, old fashioned gender roles, or if you had someone, uh, say a working woman in, in kind of this old mindset, like they would you know, have stages, they would have child bearing stage, and then they'd have career stage. And then they would have like this other stage later on in life, or even for men, you know, like 
you, you have your career and then maybe you do philanthropy in retirement, but you don't do it during your career. Like there's mm-hmm. all the, that's how it, it largely was in previous generations. Um, but I think we've largely disrupted that in, in the last decade or so. And I don't think that holds anymore. I don't think we have to choose. Um, do we have to be thoughtful about what we say yes to? And, and um, do we have to be careful about overextending uh, those sorts of things? Absolutely. We can't be all things to all people all the time. So we do have to be careful about it and, and guard ourselves and put up boundaries. And we have to understand our own bandwidth. And we don't want to overextend ourselves to the point of burnout. We have to practice self-care, all those things, right? Um, but I really like how you focus on on getting outside of that, that limiting paradigm of just saying, I have to be one thing because we don't have to be one thing. We're all complex people. We all have a variety of talents. That's exactly my point. It's like, it's like trying to package your, no, I was just identifying so much with what you're saying. And I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was like, yes, it's like, it's that I found myself because I've grown up in corporate America. I've been in sales since I was 18. I went with my first big fortune 500 company by the time I was 20 and I've just stayed ever since. So I say that because, you know, you mentioned it in the last 10 years, a lot of the mindset has shifted, but I've been a 20 year corporate gal at this point. And so there's a lot of that conditioning that was on me. And I, I really felt for a long time, like I, I express my art through creative expression. So I like speaking, writing, I even like creating t-shirts and just all sorts of things. But I really, even some of my older, my mentors at the time, if I'm rewinding back eight to 10 years was like, oh, those are things you can work on later in life. And I felt this repression inside of me. And um, it really all came to head when I create, when the power of and expanded me. And I, I, if, well, I can pause first to see if you have anything you want to say, and then I can tell you how I came into the power of and, oh. and why I'm so like passionate about it. <laughs> no, that's That's great. Continue on. Okay, great. Um, so I was a, um, a sale a regional sales manager in a position. This is back probably about 2014. And I had signed up for a Kundalini yoga instructor course, which was nine months long. And it was awesome and so transformative and just amazing. But it's like the opposite of corporate America. Like literally yoga is probably the opposite of the corporate sales floor, right? So here I am as a sales leader, openly taking this yoga instructor course. It was nine months long and my corporate like peers, sales management peers and my executives were like, are you insane? Like Becca, there is no way yoga is going to replace the income that you make here. And I was, I felt like I had an out-of-body experience because I'm like looking at them, like it never dawned on me that I was going to replace my career. Actually, I, I just, I didn't, I don't have any intentions of it replacing my career. It was just something that I liked. And then you have, it's like the paradoxical, I love paradoxical energies, but so then I go to my yoga class and I'm in with a whole different type of mindset and different type of people. And they're like, oh, I bet you can't wait to quit, quit your corporate job. That's, that must be like sucking your soul right out of you. I was like, actually, I kind of like sales. and I just like yoga too. <laughs> and, and so I felt the pull between world, worlds. I literally felt like I was being pulled like this, like back and forth with both arms. And then I just decided, I'm like, well, I'm both. I am a corporate badass and I'm a like, a, a, like full in yogi, like I'm, I'm in. And once I said that and like claimed that and, I felt expansion. Like I felt it from my heart center. I was like, whoa. And then I formed more ands, like, I can be a good mom and a full-time careered woman. I can do this and I can do that. And it just really built from there, but that's why I get so passionate about it. No, I I think that's fantastic. And that passion is important. And just the realization that you don't have to choose and and that tension, right? And, And people on either side saying, well, you have to choose one or the other. Well, why? Why do we have to choose that? Um, Again, we, we don't have infinite time and energy and money, so we do have to make some choices. But yeah, we within reason, we can, we can um, 
expand our our uh, what, what our attention goes to, what we spend our time with, where our passions lie, what our talents are. We can explore those talents. We can explore new hobbies. There's lots of things, and it doesn't mean we need to make money from it, right? We can explore new relationships. Like there's all these things, and and just looking at. Um, and that's that's why you you focus on the power of and and looking at and over or uh, this kind of false dichotomy. That's how I view it. Like yes. there's this false dichotomy. Yes. We have to choose between two things when the whole our whole life is messy. Our whole life is complicated, and everything's on a spectrum. And so we're always navigating that. And there's a tension there, and there's a and it's challenging. No no question about it. And sometimes we get the balance wrong, and sometimes we crash and burn, and and all that's part of the journey, Absolutely. I suppose. Um, but, but I would hate to see someone completely limit their, their ability to have fulfilling, um, aspects of their life, just because they think they have to choose between a fulfilling career versus being a mom, for example. Um, you don't have to choose that isn't, uh, that's an artificial choice yes, <laughs> that, and, that society has told us exists, but it, it's not real. And you brought up a point that makes me like, think, um, for, you know, for the listeners to visually be able to see this, we wear a lot of metaphysical hats like you were mentioning in the beginning. And what I had found before I gave myself this permission of, and is that while I was at work, I was wearing my work hat while I was at home, I was wearing my mom hat. And I found um, myself sometimes feeling guilty if I was at work and I had to shift into mom mode. Right. I was like, Oh, oh, I gotta go. I just got a phone call from the school. I've got to even if I didn't have to leave work, but I had to do some administrative thing, like some paperwork or what, you know, all these things happen. I wasn't very flexible with myself as far as what role I was in. And then once I gave myself the, the, once I leaned into the power of, and I was able to be at work and be a mom at the same time, I released the guilt. Like if I had to stop and do something mom related, like, guess what? I'm a mom. <laughs> you know, I don't have to feel bad about that. <laughs> and um, that was very liberating. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is liber- liberating. And I've, I've struggled with that a little bit too. And now obviously it's different for me. I'm a man. Uh, I get that. I don't have all the same um, pressures and strains. Uh, but I am, you know, I consider myself a family man. I, I contribute a lot. Um, you know, I work a lot from home. I have six children. I, I'm very Ooh. involved. I, I help them with their homework and go to school events. And I, you know, I do all those things. I help, uh, you know, I do things around the house all day long, you know, like I, I feel like I'm pretty darn involved and I would go crazy if I felt like I had to feel guilty every time I got pulled in a different direction. Um, because it happens all day, every day. Right. And I don't know, at some point my mind just flipped and I'm like, yeah, it's just the way it is. Like, I'm just going to, when I need to help the kids with something, I'm going to help the kids with something. If my wife needs something. I'm going to help my wife with something work calls. And I need to do something, even if it's 8 PM, you know, I can set up, you know, reasonable boundaries, but sometimes you got to take that call at 8 PM and I'm not going to feel bad about it. Um, and so, you know, giving myself permission to just lean into all the different roles that I play, uh, has been liberating. <laughs> I don't spend as much time with guilt and shame or just feeling like I'm not enough, uh, but I can be there uh, and be my whole authentic self in the moment with who, whomever I am, you know, in, involved with. And, and that is a much, I think that's a much healthier place to be. So much healthier. And I love that you gave the inverse of that too, because you know, you run your own business. A lot of people, we, you know, especially in leadership and sales and entrepreneurship, you're doing many roles and you're really serving people at the end of the day. And so I used to have, try to have harder boundaries on myself when I got home, like I'm in mom mode and now I'm not in work mode. And to your point, once I was able just to be one person, I could make the conscious choice. Do I want to take an eight o'clock at night call? Like, I know I might be tired when I take this, but yes, this is a conscious. Yes. This is something I need to do. And then there's just no feeling associated with it. And because I'm clear, I feel like the family responds in clarity too. They're like, Oh, mom has to take a call. Cool. Like that's it. (laughs) There's no drama around it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, and how do we balance? We've talked about the balance a couple of times. And some people call it work-life balance. Sometimes people call it work-life integration. There's a variety of terminology. I don't really care what words you use uh, as long as we do it in a healthy way. But one thing I referenced a little bit earlier was we do have to to recognize our boundaries. 
um, our bandwidth, we do have to learn how to say no to things. And so on the one hand, I think I really like this idea of being able to say yes and, and expanding my options and the power of and I think, oh, I can, I can take out this thing and that thing and that thing. Um, but pretty soon, if you are always saying and, if you're always saying yes, you're going to get to the point, if you're not careful, sure. of, of just being completely buried, completely overwhelmed, and there's and then you're not good to anybody. So how do you how have you found that you've been able to to deal with that tension and to have you know healthy boundaries? There's a there's an art to it for sure. And I think you said two of the words that I would um, say that works for me, boundaries and priorities. Okay, so um, when I was in my, I, I worked myself into autoimmune disease to anxiety disorders and, um, my hair was falling out in clumps. So I definitely had formulas upside down for a while. Um, it was when I learned to put boundaries in place and you kind of said it, I had to learn that saying yes to myself meant that I said no to other people or I'm, you know, in sales and in leadership. So I would take a lot on a lot of projects, do a lot of committees, do a lot of volunteering, like extra things. And while all of them are great, um, what I know about the leader archetype is that there is um, a big component of serving and impact associated with that. So we end up even talking about an and like a leader is it could be a disaster if there wasn't boundaries and priorities because they're prone to serve and make impact. And then they're going to add like passion to that and other projects. I mean, they can burn out in two seconds. But for me, it was learning what, what my yes, you know, and it, and that will lead me into priorities. And I'd love to hear your opinion on it. But the second one is priorities. So I have learned for me that I can only have like three priorities at one time. And you know, sometimes it's two if I'm really trying to get into the details of something. And if they're lighter things, maybe it's four. But roughly, I say I have three priorities right now. And right now, my priorities are three. I have um, my my kids, my career, and then this, you know, my entrepreneurial business. And I would say the fourth is and is most important is my self-care. So um, those are four, but the one is a non-negotiable. I had to learn to prioritize myself above everything else for the formula to work. And so that's a non-negotiable, but then I have like, like I said, family work, and then my book and coaching consulting stuff I do on the side. And that's really, that's it. Those are the things that are important to me right now. Yeah. Uh, being able to articulate those priorities can't in and of itself can be very challenging. We have to be very in tune with our values um, and, and really what we, what brings meaning and purpose to our lives. Um, now, you know, in, in my life, my family is number one. Uh, that's my number one priority. And that's very like crystal clear in my mind in terms of my values. Um, and so that for me, wasn't a hard thing, but that's for me, right? And other people have uh, different calculus. Uh, they have different priorities and different values. So know yourself, practice the self-reflection, take the time to understand what's most important to you. And it's not like, you, it's again, it's, it's a spectrum. It's not an either or. And so my family can be my number one value, my number one priority. That doesn't mean I then can't also put focus and time towards my career or to serving the community or you know, on and on and on, right? So just just know that about yourself. And and I think that sounds obvious, but it's tricky and it's hard because so much of what we think we value is not actually what we value. It's just what the world has told us we're supposed to value. It's it's the expectations and norms of those around us. And, and I think that's why so many people find themselves in a midlife crisis at some point in their life where they just have this, this moment where they're just like, wait a minute, my life sucks. This isn't what I want at all. And you've been, you've been uh, on the hamster wheel doing the grind and just doing what other people mm -hmm. say brings happiness when really it's not, it, it doesn't have any real uh, connection with you. Um, I, I think that's one of the main drivers of, of those types of experiences, those uh, existential crises that we might have. And so it's, it's more challenging than we think. We have to practice the regular self-reflective uh, practices, mindfulness, and really get in tune with who we are, what we're trying to accomplish, what we value most. And sometimes that means we're going to have to 
do things that maybe are different than what our parents think is best for us or our, our families or even what our, our profession says, this is the right path for, for someone's career. You know what? Be creative, be innovative, carve your own path. Most people don't have linear paths anyways. Um, so just lean into it, own it. And, and I, I think then you'll, you'll find more meaning and purpose. Does that mean it's easy? Does that mean it's going to be, um, you know, smooth sailing? Of course not. In fact, I think the, the life well lived is rarely, uh, you know, the easy path. And so we, we just have to, um, we, ha we have to be, we have to recognize that and be aware of that. And if we can identify those values, it's going to help us to better identify those priorities. Um, but we have, we have to be able to do both of those. Yeah, I, I agree. And I really like that you brought in um, value to it. And you also were kind of alluding to the fact that it's evolutionary, right? We have different stages of our lives, different things are happening. And so I want to say that, you know, flexibility with yourself is also key because for me, like I, I worked myself into autoimmune disease. What does that mean? When my stress levels get high, I still have a flare up. I have gone into remission. I have my ANAs are negative, but I will still go into flare up because I got to that heightened state. So I, I say that because I might want to press the gas. Like I'm a creative. I have like, I have another book idea already. I've got a lot of things I want to do, but if, if I'm in a flare up and life gives me that unexpected, like, Hey, Becca, now you're in a flare up. Well, guess what? I have to have that self-awareness and self-respect and self-honor to be like, okay, my priorities need to shift right now. I need to put this on hold and I need to move nutrition, working out, rest, right? Instead of production, I need to rest. And that's why I like to frame that under flexibility because we're always evolving. But if we get in tune to ourselves, like you were saying, then that permission can look a little different and it doesn't have to be so rigid. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm all about flexibility. And we're, we're all a work in progress, aren't we? And so, you know, if, if I'm the same today as I was 10 years ago or five years ago, or even a year ago, I think there might be a problem. Uh, I don't want to be the same, you know, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, I want to be growing. And that means that my mindset will shift. That means my values will shift. That means um, my priorities might shift. That means, you know, that I'm constantly reevaluating how I understand the world around me, taking in new data, uh, recalculating, you know, all of those things are happening constantly and it's all it, flexibility and adaptability, I think is the name of the game. Uh, and if we can, if we can lean into that and, and learn how to do that effectively for ourselves, then I think that increases our chance of influence and impact. Certainly it increases our opportunity for meaning and purpose in life and in work. Uh, and maybe the last thought is just connecting this back to leadership. If, if I want to lead dynamic teams, uh, in, in my organization, I need to have passion for the work that I do. And one of the best ways I know how to do that is to cross pollinate from various aspects of my lives where I have interest and passion. Uh, and so at, at various points and stages, one, you know, part of my job may be waning in terms of my interest in that thing. Right. But I can pull in meaning and purpose and passion from another area of my life. And so they can energy, you can energize yourself from these various areas. You can model that and demonstrate that for your team so that they can be more energized in sustainable ways so that everyone can bring their best self to work and be more productive and innovative and creative and in all of those things. Um, so this, this definitely is something that is important for each of us individually to consider. I think it's very important for us to also think about it in terms of modeling and leadership and how we guide our teams towards success in the organization. I agree. Well, Becca, it has been a real pleasure. I note the time it has flown by and I have to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap up, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, uh, where they can find your book, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. All right. So, well, you can find me on, I have three social platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, all the same handle. I keep it easy at Becca Powers 1313. I also, um, as I talk about the power and it really stems from, you know, my, I have a huge passion for breaking up with burnout. So if you want to take a little burnout survey, see if you're there, um, you can go to beccapowers.com forward slash burnout, have a little free assessment. 
and my book is the antidote to burnout is what I like to say. And it's harness your inner CEO and can be found on any of the major book retailers, including Amazon, which seems to be the easiest for everyone. Wonderful. Thank you, Becca. It has just been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Becca can do for you. Check out her book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.